네 안녕하세요 어, 약속드린 대로 닥터 제이슨 펌을 인터뷰하게 됐습니다 저한테 되게 영광스러운 일이고요 어, 캐나다까지 와서 만나 뵙게 됐는데 여러분들께도 좋은 인사이트가 되기를 바랍니다 Well, welcome to my show, Dr. Fong oh, It's such an honor to have you on my show and oh. meet you in person oh, Thank yeah. you so much As a chiropractor, I'm specialized in musculoskeletal care, right? And metabolic disease is out of my scope that I didn't have any interest or like any knowledge about it but then your book the obesity code changed like the way i think oh. and i'm sure as a conventionally trained medical doctor i'm sure you have a moment to think outside of the box or anything that made you think a little differently than what you've been trained to can you tell me a little about it yeah sure it was um it was mostly because what we we're doing was really not working very well so if you look at metabolic disease. So the two big ones would be uh, obesity and type 2 diabetes. Yes. We clearly had not been doing very well. <clears throat> so if you look at the number of people in the United States or really around the world uh, affected with obesity and affected with type 2 diabetes, the numbers had been going up for many decades actually, really since the 70s. And yet the, the advice was the same, right? We kept giving the same advice, you know, you know, cut your fat, cut your calories, watch your calories, count your calories. And it really wasn't working. So, you know, there's, there's two sort of ways to look at that. If things are getting worse, right? And that's not for debate that things have been getting worse. Either you blame the people or you blame the sort of teachers right because obviously it's either that the advice is good but people aren't following it or the advice is no good and people are following it right so it's right. very important to know which one is the problem so for so long we had been blaming the people because you know we kept saying well you know they weren't doing it they weren't listening to us but i don't think it was true i think people were listening to us i think that the advice that we had been giving was not very good. It mm -hmm. was <clears throat> to eat all the time, eat constantly, and count your calories. Both strategies are actually um, not very uh, effective. And second of all, it was not really in keeping with what a lot of the scientific literature was saying. The scientific literature was saying that uh, counting calories, for example, was mm -hmm. a very ineffective way to do it. Same thing with type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes uh, was getting worse and the, the so-called experts had been saying that it was a chronic and progressive disease when it really wasn't true. Everybody knew it wasn't true because if you lost weight, that diabetes would often get better or go away completely. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the problem was not that they weren't listening to us. The problem was that we weren't successful in getting them to lose weight. So it all comes back to the same sort of thing. So that's where I really became, became interested in thinking like, let's, let's take a look at what the, the studies say. Let's take a look at how we can think about it differently. And mm -hmm. there were different people who were do, thinking different things. It's just that we are so stuck in this sort of calories in, calories out model that we couldn't see sort of uh, past that. But the implications were huge because if people are getting obese, if they're getting type 2 diabetes, that would set them up for all kinds of other bad diseases. Right. down the line heart disease strokes cancers you know kidney disease blindness amputations mm -hmm. like you name it um i think it was uh sort of mostly around 20 2008 2009 there was a couple of studies that had come out called the advance and the accord mm -hmm. study for type 2 diabetes and they were very very important because up until that point um i along with every sort of conventionally trained person thought that treatment of type 2 diabetes really involved giving lots of drugs to try to get that blood sugar down. And if you got that blood sugar down, then, um, you know, they wouldn't get these heart attacks and strokes mm -hmm. and kidney disease because I'm a kidney specialist. So that the kidney disease part mm -hmm. was interesting to me. Uh, what it showed was that it actually didn't make any difference. Mm -hmm. So that was, you know, to me, a complete sort of, um, it required a complete change in the way we approach the disease. But more than that, a, a complete change in the way we think about the disease. Because again, <clears throat> if you think about type 2 diabetes, you have all this glucose in the blood. So then we give medications at the time as a lot of insulin. And what happened to all that glucose? Well, nobody ever asked that question. Where mm -hmm. did all that glucose go? 
right? So if you think about the glucose that's in the blood, you give a patient insulin, where did that glucose go? Well, the glucose simply forced it into their bodies, into their liver, the liver turned it into fat, people mm -hmm. gain weight. So if you think about it, these patients have type 2 diabetes, their blood glucose was high, so we gave them insulin, which made them fatter, mm -hmm. which made their type 2 diabetes worse, which meant we had to give more insulin, and that's a vicious cycle because now you're giving more insulin, which made them gain more weight because, again, the insulin is taking that glucose and forcing it into the body. So they're taking more insulin, which made mm -hmm. them gain more weight, which made their diabetes worse, which made them more, take more insulin. Yeah. So the whole thing was completely wrong. And instead, what we should have done is say, well, your blood glucose is high. Well, how are you going to lower that blood glucose? Well, you have glucose, let your body use it. So something like intermittent fasting is an ideal strategy because it says, well, instead of eating, let your body eat all that excess glucose. Now, if you use up that excess glucose, it doesn't turn into fat. You lose weight. As you lose weight, you need less insulin, which means that you'll lose more weight, which means your type 2 diabetes will get better, which means you'll need less insulin. Yeah. So the whole idea of type 2 diabetes is that it's a dietary disease, so you really need to use a dietary strategy. But instead, we have been so focused on medicines, and that's where it sort of led me more towards the uh, trying to understand these Things it gets listed as functional medicine, but it's really just about good health, right? You can't exactly. use drugs mm -hmm. to reverse a dietary disease, and that's the bottom line, right? If you have celiac disease, if you have gluten intolerance, stop gluten. That's <laughs> that's the answer. It's not give lots of drugs. So if diabetes is that your body has too much sugar, glucose, well, stop eating so much glucose, right? Because the whole thing is very simple to understand. It's so simple that even, even doctors can understand, right? The, the <laughs> idea is that if you think about foods, right, there's three major types of macronutrients. So most foods are composed of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. That's the three macronutrients. So proteins are chains of amino acids. Mm -hmm. Fats are fatty acids. And carbs, bread, rice, potatoes, are glucose. So that's just their chemical structure. Mm -hmm. There's no denying that carbs are glucose. So right. if you eat carbs, you're eating glucose, which is going to make your blood glucose go mm -hmm. up. So if you have a disease like type 2 diabetes where your body has too much glucose and the glucose is just spilling out into the blood, well, why don't you not eat the glucose and mm -hmm. eat the proteins and the fats instead? Mm -hmm. uh, that makes perfect sense. Exactly. And these low carbohydrate diets have actually been in use since the 1850s. So it's not like we're trying to describe something new. We're actually describing something that's been very old, something mm -hmm. that has been used for, for hundreds of years. If you have foods, so, so again, it, it blows my mind how simple this really is. <laughs> if there are certain foods that raise your blood glucose, right? And there are certain foods that don't raise your blood glucose. Mm -hmm. We know that there's a glycemic index of foods. So some foods we, we measure, you know, 100 people take the average of how their blood glucose reacts. So the, those foods that are very high in the glycemic index are refined carbohydrates. So if you have too much, if your blood glucose is too high, mm -hmm. eat the foods that don't raise your blood glucose. Right? <laughs> Isn't that pretty obvious? And yeah. yet no doctors would ever say this. And no dietitians and no diabetes associations. Like, I'm just like, whoa, what are you insane? <laughs> like, why would you eat a food that makes your blood glucose worse? Why don't you eat the foods that don't make your blood glucose worse? And why aren't you telling people this? And that's where I started to write about it and so on. Um, so that was metabolic disease, mm -hmm. and it, which is very closely entwined to, to weight gain, obesity, because they're all sort of metabolic diseases. So we have a food pyramid, and then there is advice out there, but it is just uh, contradict to what you've been discussing so far. So what's a proper human diet in your definition? Well, there's lots of different things that are human diet, because really, um, you know, when you think about the way that people eat. There's lots of, you know, things that you know, different people eat. So diff people eat differently in North America mm -hmm. compared to Asia, compared to Europe, compared to Africa. 
Right. So there's lots of different uh, types of diet, and the the idea is that you can either change the types of foods that you eat, mm -hmm. or you change the frequency that you eat, right? And those two things are going to impact your blood glucose. So if you are eating foods that really raise your blood glucose, then you have to change either the amount that you eat mm -hmm. or the frequency that you eat, right? So it's just like if you get paid, right? If you get paid a hundred dollars a day, right? It's different if you get paid a hundred dollars a day versus a hundred dollars an hour, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's just different. So why would we pretend like how frequently you eat makes no difference, mm -hmm. right? So we are telling people to eat 10 times a day, mm -hmm. right? And this was standard sort of medical advice in around 2013 right and i i was always now that i look back on it it's like mm -hmm. that's completely insane every time you eat you're going to increase your blood glucose assuming that you eat sort of an average food so again if if every time you eat raises your blood glucose mm -hmm. why would you want to raise your blood glucose 10 times a day versus two times a day Right? How does that make sense? Same thing, if you eat, your body stores calories. That's what it's supposed to do. So every time you eat, your body's gonna store calories, which is either glucose mm -hmm. or fat. Mm -hmm. So if you have too much fat or too much glucose, why would you want to put more in 10 times a day mm -hmm. versus two times a day. Right. It simply doesn't make any sense. And they try to say, well, you're gonna eat little amounts all throughout the day. But that's not how people eat. When you eat something, mm -hmm. you actually wanna keep eating. Right. That's why they call them appetizers. Because when you eat a little bit, mm -hmm. you're actually gonna you know, create saliva, you're gonna think about eating, right? So there are lots of times, for example, where people are not that hungry, um, and they could have skipped their meal, mm -hmm. but they, once they start eating, they eat the full meal. It's just habits, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, why would you want people to eat all the time? So one of the things about the, the proper human diet is that you can't eat all the time. And this was true for every, every culture. Like there was no culture pre sort of 1990 that says, eat constantly and snack constantly throughout the day, mm -hmm. right? When you think about snacks in the 60s, 70s, it was something that was very indulgent, right? Uh -huh. You're eating something at a time you really uh -huh. shouldn't be eating. That is, there were certain times that you should eat, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and outside those times, you're not supposed to eat uh -huh. anything. And that was the way that people were, whether it's in Korea or Japan or North America or England or wherever it was, because you know, you, you, you didn't eat in the car. You didn't eat at your desk. You didn't eat in front of the computer. You didn't eat walking, uh -huh. right? You didn't, you, you ate uh -huh. when it was time to eat at a meal. That's how it's supposed to be. That's yeah. how it's supposed to be. Everybody knew that you're, you know, but then after the 1990s, people kept saying, well, you should eat, 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 uh -huh. eat all the time, constantly, constantly, even to lose weight. Uh -huh. And it's like, okay, but how's that gonna work? Physiologically, it is completely impossible to lose weight if you are eating. You can only lose weight when you're not eating. That's just the truth. So if you can only lose weight when you're not eating, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. Because you, you can't lose weight when you're putting mm -hmm. calories in, then why don't you simply extend the time that you allow people to not eat? Mm -hmm which is intermittent fasting. Right. And the whole idea is that it's, it's nothing strange. It's just a natural way. There's a time to eat and there's a time not to eat. And this was known in the 70s and 80s. Uh, we forgot about it uh, after that, but the, that's where the word breakfast comes in, right? Mm -hmm. The English word breakfast, break your fast. That is, you have to feed, then you have to fast, then you have to break your fast. Nowhere in it does it say you should feed all the time and never fast, mm -hmm. right? It was, it, was, it was sort of one of these things. So if you're thinking about the diet, there's, there's lots of different things that you want to change. You, really, you want to go back to a time where you're eating natural foods. Mm -hmm. And that, can, include in car that inc can include carbohydrates, but the highly refined carbohydrates, the stuff you get sort of boxed up mm -hmm. and stuff, obviously they've been changed in many ways so that you you eat more, right? And, and everybody knows that, right? So if you if you look at a pack of cookies or something like that, 
It's not that people never ate cookies. It's just that they've packaged them. They've put all these additives in. They've put more this and that so that it's engineered so that you really want to keep eating. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't make you full. Right. So the whole idea is that you want to eat natural foods mm -hmm. and you don't want to eat all the time. Right. And those are the two main <laughs> most important things that's been missing in exactly. modern diets. It's like uh -huh. we should have been emphasizing that uh -huh. eat natural foods and don't eat highly processed foods and don't eat all the time. Uh -huh. Right. And it's like, doesn't that sound pretty logical and obvious that we should have been focusing on that instead of saying, right count your calories and buy weight loss shakes and replace your meals with highly processed bottles of meal replacement. Like, like how is that natural? Right? So. Mm -hmm.